My name is Marley Bird, and this is week four of the Nomad Fair Isle Knit Sweater. This is a five week video series where I am taking you step by step making your very first top down Fair Isle sweater. By this point, you should have completed the cowl, all of the yoke section, and it's time to divide for the sleeves and the body. If you have not reached this point in the knit along, don't worry, there's always time for you to catch up. Go ahead and watch the previous videos to get all of the instructions you might need, and then carry on with this video to divide for the sleeves and the body. For those of you who are caught up on your homework, let's go ahead, take a look at the instructions, and jump on in. By this point, we have completed all of the instructions on page two, with the exception of this little part right here, and that's where we will start in today's video. We'll go from this section here, which carries on all the way through here, and then we'll talk about the decrease and carry on with the chart and working even through the underarms. So this should be a quick video once we get through all of the first section of dividing up. I will be using a smaller swatch here in the video because it's easier to get all of the stitches for this round on camera in a smaller swatch versus on the larger sweater. So you do wanna make sure you have that sweater pattern and you're following along with the instructions as they're written for the size you're making. Looking at this swatch here, this simulates where you are in your sweater. So you have all of these stitches resting on your circular needle. And what we essentially are going to do is work across a set number of stitches, and then we will place X number of stitches on a holder. And when we do that, these stitches will be kind of held on the side, but we will carry on with stitches until we get to the next part where we have stitches held to the side, and we will be left with just these few stitches right here on the needle to work for the body of our sweater. So at this point, in the instructions, you'll see where it says with A. So this would be with your contrasting color. You would knit either 40, 44, 53, or 58 stitches. So for me, because I'm, I'm just working on 100 stitches here, I'm gonna work across 17 stitches, okay? But you will work across the number of stitches you need to work across for your sweater. I'm gonna have to count this real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, okay? So that simulates my first set of stitches that I would have knit. Now it says to cast on four stitches. Well, I'm gonna show you two different cast ons. You can either do the backwards E, where you essentially put the yarn around your thumb like you would if you were doing a long tail cast on and cast on stitches just like so. Okay, you can also do a sort of cable cast on, and I'm gonna do it without turning my work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna go between those two stitches on my right hand needle, take my yarn, I'm gonna go over top of my left hand needle. Now I wanna pull that yarn through those, or through or between those two stitches. Okay, you see that? Now I will extend the yarn that's on my left hand and I'll take my right hand needle and I'll swivel and scoop. So I place that stitch on my right hand needle. Now I'll take my left hand needle, go between the stitch I just created and the last one. So I just cast on one stitch. Okay, go around, out, swivel and scoop. Go between, so that's two, around, out, Split my yarn there, come on. There we go, out, swivel and scoop. There's three. Swivel and scoop, there's four, okay? By doing that, I just kind of get a nice cast on there and those stitches don't stretch out as much. I prefer that, so that's why I do that. All right, so there's four stitches cast on, and you can use any cast on you want that helps you cast on mid row. Now, it says slip the next 52, 56, 62, or 64 stitches 
onto the contrast color length of yarn for the sleeve. So I'm, I'm just gonna grab the other color just because I can and I am gonna slip 15 stitches for my sample. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Whoops, that was eight, nine, ten. Let me pull those a little bit. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I want to make sure I have fifteen on this length of yarn. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Notice they're on a length of yarn. I always like the yarn to be a little bit longer. I don't like those stitches to be really tight, so I like them a little bit longer. And I always tie the end of my length of yarn, so that way if I accidentally pull it, I don't pull it out of my live stitches there. So those stitches are just gonna hang out there. Those stitches will eventually become a sleeve. So I carry on now, working on the rest of the stitches on my left-hand needle, and this is where I will knit the next set of stitches. So it's either 80 stitches, 88 stitches, 106 stitches, or 116. For me, I need to knit 35. So there's three, four. So I just knit 35, okay? So those 35 stitches, for me, those count as the front of my sweater. So that's the front of my sweater, okay? Now, I would cast on four stitches again, so let's do this cast on. So let's do one, two, three, and four. Now I will tell you that if I'm going to cast on four stitches, I usually will use the exact same cast on for both places. So if I use a cable cast on here, I would use a cable cast on here, but I do wanna show you what it will look like working into those stitches, whether it's a cable or just a backward Z. So I did the four cast on stitches. Now I take a contrast color and I'm gonna place the next set of stitches on a length of yarn, just like I did on this side. So this is the other sleeve. And the number of stitches you need to put on a holder is written in your pattern. If you don't have that pattern yet, the link is in the video description below so you can still get that pattern. And I do want you to notice, I don't know if I mentioned this on the last time, but you notice when I'm slipping them, I'm slipping as if to purl. So I'm going into the stitch as if to purl and I'm slipping it off. So that's one, two, There's my 15. Again, I always, <laughs> ask me how many times I've accidentally pulled out my yarn after putting it on a holder. It's one too many times. That's why I always tie my knot in my yarn as it's being held. Okay, so now I would carry on and I finish up knitting my stitches on my needle here and it should get me right back to the start of my round. All right, so at that point, you should be able to count all of the stitches that are on your needle, excluding the stitches that are out here that are on the holder, and you should have the same count that is written at the end of this section, okay? When you have that stitch count, you'll then notice on the next round that one of the sizes has to decrease four stitches evenly around. So it's just that that size needs a few, few, a few fewer stitches than what is already on there. Um, and so if you're making that particular size, which is the extra large 2XL, you will need to work one round right now, um, evenly decreasing four stitches at four points. So you could do one here, one here, one here, one here. You could do here, you could do here, whatever works for you. Just make sure you evenly space out those decreases. And going by the written instructions, it looks like your decrease should be a knit two to 
together. So I would use a knit two together to decrease those four stitches. But at this point, your work looks a little something like this. You have all of these stitches on your needle still right here, okay? So here's the stitches on the needle. Here are stitches that would be held aside for the sleeve. And obviously you have more work on this part. This is all the fair isle you have created. But at this point, you're carrying on just with the work that is on your stitches here, okay? So after you do that next round, which would just be a knit round even, unless you're making the extra large to 2X size, you then would carry on with chart number six, okay? And you would just follow all of the instructions, whether it's through the chart or just working evenly in one color, and then ultimately working down to where it's a knit two, purl two ribbing at the very end. I'm here to my stitches that I cast on. These are my four stitches that I'm casting on here. And these stitches here, these will make up my underarm so that is why I really like to have a nice solid structure to my cast on stitches there. And I really feel like the cable cast on stitches give me a really nice structure. So I like to use those more than when I'm doing, um, more than doing the backwards E. I'm gonna get over here to the backwards E one so you can see what I mean. But when you do the sleeve, you will have stitches cast on here also, and you will graft these two points together. But I like having that little bit of something there with the cable cast on stitches. Um, that's just my own personal preference. You can just do the backwards E if that's what you wish to do. Totally up to you. Remember that this round here, if you're doing the extra large or the 2X, you would be decreasing four stitches evenly at some points up to you around this round, but all of the other sizes, you just wanna knit this full round. So this is as if we're working the round that's called next round after we divide for the body and the sleeves. And then once you've completed this round, that's when you will jump in to follow the chart for chart number six. And by this point, you know how to follow charts. You've done it so far through the entire yoke. So there's nothing new to that bit. All right, so here I am coming up to the backwards E. First thing to notice, see how stretched out and crazy they are? Okay, that's just the way they get because they don't have a lot of structure to them. Okay, so look at this. I just, these are not, this is not my favorite cast on at all to use. So I'm gonna come over here, I have to find it. So I've already got all of that stretch there. And it's at a point in my sweater that's gonna, it's a stretch or a stress point, right? Because it's the underarm. And so why do I wanna give myself added stretch or stress at that point? So let's, let's knit these and we'll take a look at what we have. All right, can you see they just, they just have, I just don't like them. I feel like there's just too, too much stretch there. See how stretchy those points are compared to over here? They're just nice and tidy together. Can you see the difference? Hopefully if you did one versus the other, you can tell the difference. Um, if you cannot do the cable cast on for whatever reason, the backwards E cast on does work. Uh, but yeah, so that's the difference there. Let me come around here to the end and take a look at what we have and take a look at the instructions. So much easier to do this on the smaller sample than on the larger size at this point. Hope you guys agree. All right, so here I am to the middle, this is the middle back of the sweater. Okay, that's where we are starting. We're at the middle back of the sweater. Here are the sleeves all out here, and this is the body. That's the body starting to really take shape down from what would have been your fair aisle right here, okay? So at this point, let's pull the instructions back in here. We just finished this part, so I'm gonna turn the page to page three of four. Yes, all of my post-it notes are still here in place. And we have done all of this section, that's the part that uh, is continuation from the second page. This is the next round that I just did where I said you would knit evenly around unless you're doing that green size or the extra large to two extra large. And at this point, you would work chart number six to the end of the chart. 
Noting, eight stitch repeat will be worked over 21, 23, 27, or 30 times, and then break color A. So just like anything before, these are the stitches you will be working. It's an eight stitch repeat, and you will work that all the way around all of those stitches for those 11 rows. Then you'll break your color A, and then you continue on with your main color, but you'll notice on this round, you're gonna decrease eight, four, eight or four st stitches evenly around. That's just getting us to where our stockinette stitch gauge will match up with our knit fair isle gauge. So that's why we're gonna decrease that number of stitches. Again, it's just decrease evenly around, use knit two togethers. And then you should have this number of stitches on your needle. And you carry on knitting even until your work from the cast on stitches at the underarm, so from these stitches right here, okay, until your work measures about 12 inches or 14 inches, depending on the size you're making. If you're interested in adding extra length to your sweater, it is at this point you would add those extra inches. Once you've reached your desired length, you would jump into a knit two, purl two ribbing, and you work that for about two inches. Then you knit one round, and cast off knitwise, okay? Knit one round, cast off knitwise. And that's where I want you to end for your homework for this week. And that's it for this part of the sweater. It should feel really good knowing you've completed all of that fair isle and now the body of your sweater is complete. You can try it on at this point. The sleeves aren't done, so it'll look like a short sleeve sweater, but you should be able to try it on to see how it looks on you and getting really excited for next week's instructions where we finish the sleeves and weave in all your, all your ends, excuse me, and your sweater will be complete. Can you believe it? You are making a sweater and you will have it done in five weeks total. I am so proud of all of you for working along with this beautiful sweater and I cannot wait to see this part finished on yours. Go ahead and complete your homework and I'll catch you next week. I'm Marley Bird, bye guys. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye, guys.